What is Chainsaw Man? Who is Chainsaw Man? Part two is a meta commentary on the franchise itself and its creator, Tatsuki Fujimoto. Part two is about what it is, a sequel, a continuation. Tatsuki Fujimoto continues to be creatively unique, refusing to give the audience a standard sequel, and instead, he decides to turn things around, showing us, the audience, what it's like to be misinterpreted and copied by others. Part two is also a story about change and the resistance and anger that fans feel towards it. As the chapters have been rolling out, people have continued asking, where's power? Where's the blood fiend? Will Dinji turn the blood fiend back into power? But I think he shouldn't. And that's the point. This video is being made before part two has ended. So I'm looking forward to coming back and making a part two of this video to go over all of the meta commentary and revisit this idea of whether or not power was brought back or not. But for now, let's go over some of the more meta aspects of this series. Let's define what a meta reference is. A meta reference is a category of self-references occurring in many media or media artifacts like published texts, documents, films, paintings, TV series, comic strips, or video games. It includes all references to or comments on a specific medium, media artifact, or the media in general. These references and comments originate from a logically higher level, a meta level, within any given artifact and draw attention to or invite reflection about media-related issues, such as the production, performance, or reception of said artifact. It's not just in part two that we see Fujimoto playing with this idea of referencing Chainsaw Man as a franchise within his own series. I remember getting to this page, this panel, where Makima refers to Chainsaw Man as a commercial product and how I realized that this was Fujimoto referencing the success of Chainsaw Man in the real world. Towards the end of part one, a peculiar thing happens. Dingy, Chainsaw Man, accumulates fans. Crowds of people shout excitedly, Chainsaw Man, Chainsaw Man. They try to emulate him, throwing up chainsaws in reverie of the greatness of Chainsaw Man. This coincides with the rise in popularity of Chainsaw Man, the series, in the real world. Tatsuki Fujimoto's first mega hit. And Makima continues to tie together this idea of Chainsaw Man and fandom with her own obsession with Chainsaw Man, trying to say what he is and what he isn't. Makima was a Chainsaw Man super fan, and her obsession with him wasn't true love, and that's why she was able to try and control him and act out in violence. I also think that in this way, Makima is a reflection of Fujimoto's own anxiety around how his ending would be received. But before we proceed to talking about part two, we have to make a quick pit stop at a story that was released right before part two. This short story was called Just Listen to the Song, written by Tatsuki Fujimoto, but illustrated by Oto Toda. And in summation, it's about a young man who creates a song for one person in particular, but it goes viral online and it's misinterpreted by the general public. But thankfully, in the end, the young woman he made it for understands what it's truly about. While some people decided to take this short story and believe that it meant that Fujimoto didn't want people to look critically at his own work, instead, I see it as Fujimoto asking his audience to please look for the heart, the overall meaning, and not just get caught up on little details when trying to understand his work. This short story is about the nature of sequels. After his first song was released and became a global hit, there were people who were waiting with bated breath for the second part, only to be disappointed. Fujimoto knew he was going to do something different for part two, and that not everyone was going to understand it. Our first openly meta moment in the series is when we see a street interview about Chainsaw Man. And there's people's responses that align with what you might hear in the real world when asked a question about what do you think about the series Chainsaw Man. There's an older man who says that he thinks it's much too violent for children, and a schoolboy who says he doesn't like it because it's too popular. Just like we saw developing towards the end of part one, in part two there is Chainsaw Man merch everywhere. 
Seriously, it's like an Easter egg hunt reading each new chapter. I'm always looking for a bit of Chainsaw Man merch. We've seen plushies, figurines, pillows, food. And even as someone who isn't living in Japan and hasn't lived in Japan during the Chainsaw Man craze, I still know that there was tons of merchandising happening around the time of peak interest in Chainsaw Man in Japan. Next, we would be introduced to the concept of Denji having to keep his identity as Chainsaw Man a secret. We're all familiar with superheroes having a secret identity. And usually it's them themselves who know that they cannot let other people know who they are. But Denji, on the other hand, is ready to let the world know that he is Chainsaw Man. Fame is something that Denji is enjoying. Even the parts that involve other people fighting each other in the name of what Chainsaw Man is and what he stands for. And eventually we see that because Denji is not able to fully claim the title as Chainsaw Man and be believed when he tells people that he's Chainsaw Man, his identity, what he stands for, who he is, is misinterpreted by the general public and there's even fakers who claim to be him. I could see this connecting to Fujimoto's real life where he keeps his face hidden. But is that truly all his own doing? Or is it shown in Jump? Maybe some editors who tell him that he cannot show his own face. So just like Dinji, he's forced to sit back and watch other people fight and misinterpret his own work. As of now, Fujimoto does have an official account, but that wasn't always the case. And famously, he even pretended to be his own non-existent little sister online. And while Fujimoto does have his own account, he doesn't say much. It's mostly reflecting on things that he's eaten or series that he's watched or read that he would recommend to his followers. But I'm sure his account is closely monitored and controlled, which is something that we see being brought up all throughout the series, the idea of control and how it's a part of life. And so it seems like Fujimoto does have some feelings that he can't exactly express on his own social media accounts. In part two, we see how Chainsaw Man has inspired other characters to want to be more like him. Yuko is our first character who really wants to embody Chainsaw Man. Then we had Iseumi who claimed that he was Chainsaw Man. And then there's Miri, a character who looks suspiciously like Denji, and who after being controlled by Makima is totally ready to be his own person, except he isn't. Instead, he decides to become a follower of the Chainsaw Man Church. We're shown the character Seigi, who is a part of the Devil Hunting Club and claims to be Chainsaw Man on live television for the Chainsaw Man Church. And this greatly disturbs Denji. Let's talk about the Chainsaw Man Church because they definitely decided to take some creative liberties when crafting an ideology around what Chainsaw Man stands for. It would be in this very church that Denji would find his biggest antagonist as of now, Barum, the flamethrower hybrid, who we would learn was using the fire devil to make contracts with people so that they could reach their desired form. These devotees would later sprout chainsaws. So we have all of these characters who were inspired by Chainsaw Man now trying to emulate him. So how might this connect to the meta story? Well, I see it as Fujimoto reflecting on the people that he's inspired, but Fujimoto, like his creation Denji, is unique. And I think Fujimoto wants other creators to be themselves. In Fujimoto's first serialized work, Fire Punch, it touches on this idea as well. In it, we see how quick people are to deify our main character and rely on him instead of cultivating their own strengths. Next, we're going to have to talk about Makima. Barum was someone who was infuriated that Naita would take her place because Makima could have fixed everything. Makima made things good. And I think this connects to how some people feel resistance towards Naita being the new control devil. Then. There's Naita herself, who early on questioned who she was and deeply wanted to connect back to this other her, to the point that she was ready to try and ruin Denji's life in order to make some connection to herself and Chainsaw Man. But then she realizes who she is. She's Naita. She's family. Naita's own comfort in her identity and the beauty in the life that Denji and her share should tell the audience 
that it's time to let go of Makima and embrace this new control devil, embrace Naita as her own separate character. And that part two isn't something that's going to just bring back all of our old favorites exactly as they were before. In part one, Power left Denji with this motivation, this goal to go find the Blood Fiend and turn it back into power. Now, before I'd known that a part two had been announced, I understood this as Power trying to give Denji a reason to live because he'd already told her that he essentially had lost all reason to keep going after she had been killed. In other Fujimoto stories, we've seen characters who've clung to the hope of something that seems impossible in order to process their own trauma. So I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't a similar situation with Dinji. Even in part two, it doesn't seem like Dinji is really working to find the Blood Fiend and make them power again. Instead, he's able to see traits of power in these new people he's interacting with, namely Asa. And many fans have noticed the similarities between Naita and Power as well. So Power's last request is maybe less about actually going out and turning the Blood Fiend back into herself. No, it's about Denji finding what he loved in Power in these new people that he would bring into his life. Through part two, Fujimoto is reflecting on his own experience as a creative person, someone who can inspire others but is forced to keep a certain distance from his fans. He's also given us a story about the nature of sequels and the inevitability of change. It seems as though Fujimoto wants us to be empathetic towards creators and to understand that as they change, so will their art. And maybe if the audience is able to accept change, they'll be able to see the beauty in what's new. As of recording this video, we are at chapter 157. I would love to continue this Chainsaw Man journey with you, so why not follow so that you know when I've made a new video and we can see together how this story unfolds.